And here we go. So we'll start again, confidence intervals. Today we're just doing 9D.1 and then some time for your folio. I'll have a big general chat about the folio a bit later. Um, I'll make a list of stuff to talk about to everyone. So yeah, we'll get straight in here. What we are introducing you to is the formula for a confidence interval. Um, so we're, first we're doing confidence intervals for means. We do that through all of 9D and then we'll do confidence intervals for samples, which we'll do through 9F. So confidence intervals for means, this is a formula here. Let's evaluate it and then we'll talk about what it means. So in our example, we have 40 year 12 students uh, measured. So we have 40 of you guys, we measured you, and we have an observed mean height of 178 centimeters. So just in terms of notation, lower X bar, that means the sample mean. And we contrast that with the population mean. So that's the mean of the population of everyone. That's the mean of the sample, about 40. And our standard deviation was uh, eight centimetres, and we sampled 40 people. So all we're gonna do is chuck the information that we have into this formula. So we'll have 178 take. 1.96 is always the case for a 95% confidence interval. More to come on that in a moment. And then here we've got sigma divided by the square root of n. So that's 8 divided by the square root of 40 is less than the mean, which is less than 178 plus 1.96, 8 from the square root of 40. Okay, and then all we're going to do is evaluate that. So evaluate the left hand side, evaluate the right hand side. And I've got 175.52. I'm just going to leave it to five figures. And 180.48. All right, I'll talk about what that means now. So our first step is to calculate it. Now let's talk about what a confidence interval means. So I've said this number is for the 95% confidence interval. Most confidence intervals will be 95%. However, you will calculate others. And we'll have another example in a moment of other levels of confidence. But what this means is we've done a sample. We did 40 people in the sample. Based off of the sample, we are 95% confident that the true population mean, the mean of the population, lies in between these boundaries. Okay, so we are 95% confident that the true mean population of year 12 students is between 175 and 180. So let's write that down. 95% uh, confident. 95 because this is the formula for the 95% confidence interval. That's why we use 1.96. 95% confidence that the true population mean lies between 175.52 centimeters and 180.48. Okay, so that's what a confidence interval is. Now, we you will do them manually, we will look at using our calculator to perform them as well. So let's flick over the page if everyone's happy with that. And we've got we can calculate other levels of confidence. So notice here in this new formula we're providing you with. We don't have 1.96, instead we have this number called Z alpha on two, and we have it written here as well, Z alpha on two. Now first I'll talk about where we generate that from. All it is, all that number is, is if you think of the Z distribution, okay, it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, now, when we do the 95% confidence interval, all it is is area under the Z distribution is 0.95, and this upper boundary is 1.96, and this lower boundary is minus 1.96. So that's the Z distribution. The area calculation is central. 
95% area, upper boundary 1.96, lower boundary minus 1.9. That's how we get those numbers. So if we wanted to know, all right, how about the 98% confident? If we want to be more confident about our claim, what's this number gonna be? Okay, so it's an inverse normal calculation. The area is, the tail is central. And if we want 98%, we change that to 0.98. And if we evaluate it, we've got our table here, which tells us a few of them. We'd have 2.33 and minus 2.33, okay? More area means we're moving further away from the mean. All right, so we can be more confident, we can be less confident. That's how we get other levels of confidence. Okay, find the 90% confidence interval and the 99% confidence interval. So we'll calculate both of these manually and then we'll look at how we can use our calculator to do it. So, I'm going to just keep this written up here because it's pretty much the same except we're changing this number. So first let's do the 99% confidence and for 99, let's use the number that they've provided us with already. We've got Z alpha on 2, 99% confidence interval, we've got 2.58. Now let's evaluate that quickly. So I'm going to just make a list up here. I've got 95%. Now we've got 99%. I might write that as a bit neater as well. 5.52. Okay, so when we do 99, we get 174.74. and we get 181.26. Okay, now, the first thing I wanna point out here is if we want to increase our confidence, we wanna increase our confidence, we wanna say something with more confidence, the boundary is wider, we have a wider boundary, all right? And you can just think about that prob like probabilistically, like, here's a good example, all right? What's, what would you be more confident of, all right? Would you be more confident of Port Power beating Hawthorne by 100 points or Port Power just beating Hawthorne, okay? So one of them we can be much more confident of that we have a smaller window, okay? If we have a larger window, then um, we can have that large, that large, if we want a larger level of confidence, we're gonna have a larger window for which it to occur. Okay, let's do the 90% confidence. So first we need to generate what's the Z alpha on two value for a 90%. So make sure you know how to do this. So for a 90%, we're doing an inverse normal calculation. So in stats mode, stats, distribution, normal, inverse normal. Our area is central and we have 90% area. For a Z distribution, the standard deviation is one and the mean is zero, and we're just evaluating that. And we've got 1.64 and minus 1.64. Okay, between 1.64 and 1.64, area 90%. Okay, so that means for our 90% calculation, we're changing the Z alpha on two value. So 1.9, uh, 1.64. Now, when we evaluate that, look at this level of confidence. 177.74. To 178.26. Okay, isn't that fascinating? The less confidence we claim, the smaller the window becomes. The more confidence we claim, like if we want a higher level of confidence, well, we're going to stretch that window right out to guarantee that level of confidence. But 90% confidence, there's 10% error, and so we can be more uh, precise. Now, um, let's talk about how that impacts the formula as well, like why that's obviously the case. Notice how when I did the 90%, I've got 1.6 here, 1.64. 
So that means I'm doing 178 take away 1.64 multiplied by this. So I'm only taking away 1.64 times it. It's a small amount. Compared with when we did the 99% confidence interval, it's two and a half times the standard deviation of the square root. Yeah. So we're taking away much more. And so that's why you have, um, for lower levels of confidence, you have a much smaller window. You can see that that's the case. Okay, similarly, like a, there's a couple of other things to point out. Obviously, if this is the formula, if you increase n, the larger the sample size, the more indicative of the true mean your sample mean will be. Sample mean indicates true mean. If you only sample one person, that's not a good sample size, okay? The larger your sample size, the more indicative of the true mean um, your sample mean will be. So n, larger n, is going to make this smaller. All right, so there's that. That's true. Okay, and let's talk about how we can use our calculator. What you'll do, go, um, go zip, so we go menu, into statistics mode, and you notice you've got graph, calc, test, interval, I-N-T-R. That's the one we're going to press first. We press Z, and we press one sample. All right? Now, the first thing, data should always be variable. We never have it on list. Okay, so make sure it says data variable. And you've got there a number of options. Confidence level, standard deviation, uh, mean, and n. Now, I don't think I changed my standard deviation here, sorry. Uh, I think I put that in wrong, so I might have that one. This is a little bit wrong, sorry about that. I've changed the standard deviation. This should be 175.92, and this should be 180.9. There we go. So that's because I had the wrong standard deviation in there, carried over. All right, so we have, yeah, you put in your confidence level, your standard deviation, your sample mean, and your sample size, and just press evaluate. It tells you the lower boundary, tells you the upper boundary. Um, so that's how we can use our calculator to evaluate these. Now you do need to know both, you do need to know how to do it manually, alright, exam questions have popped up historically, calculating it manually, um, and what they've done is they've had like boxes for you to fill in, uh, but most of the time you can just use your calculator to evaluate it quickly, alright. If it doesn't say, you know, um, unless there's boxes to fill in, if it just says calculate confidence interval, you just type that straight into your calculator. So 9D.1, let's get into that. Let's spend a bit of time doing that and then we can 